All right, thank you, and good afternoon. Uh, as we end the first quarter, I realize how busy your lives are, so I've tried with great infrequency uh, to intrude, perhaps, and disrupt your schedules only when necessary. But I think from time to time, there are opportunities when we as a senior division in this community might spend a few minutes reflecting upon who we are. You might recall I asked you to do so at the beginning of the year at our opening convocation when I asked you to measure your success this year and think about the ways you can make yourself proud, your parents proud, your school proud, and in doing so contribute to the community. Now a couple weeks ago I asked you during our honor chapel to think about the role that the honor code plays here at St. Andrews, a very important one to say the least. So today, I'm going to ask you to think about our community in a slightly different way. I'm going to ask you to think about both who we are and where we are going as a community. Two distinct and yet interconnected topics. Now the first of those, who we are, might be considered in many contexts. But just for today, I'm going to ask you to consider it within, in the context of our upcoming midterm elections on November 6th. Because on that day, every registered voter in this country will be asked to participate in our grand experiment of democracy. Now, it's no secret, not lost upon me or any of you, that in recent years, that experiment has been tested in many ways with a sense of tension. And in fact, the most recent election cycle in 2016 provided many unfortunate examples in which any sense of civility in our discourse was completely abandoned. Now why that happened is beyond the scope of the time we have together today. But I would submit to you that with a new election coming up in three weeks, and given the point you are at in your lives, this might be a good opportunity for us to reflect upon our community of saints and the many points of view that exist upon this campus. Now, I would also submit to you that characterizing those views on a continuum from conservative to liberal, liberal to conservative, might be very convenient but it would do a grave disservice to the very rich fabric of the St. Andrews community. So I want to challenge each of you in the weeks ahead to aspire to a higher ideal in our thoughts, words, and actions. And that ideal may not be possible in every community. But in the short term, I've been a part of the St. Andrews community. I absolutely believe it's possible here because of you. And in doing so, I ask you to consider this. If not us, then who? If not here, then where? Where else? might people be able to engage themselves in civil discourse while holding strongly to their own views and respecting those of others. Now those of you who have spent any time at a Harkins table engaged in a well-executed Harkins discussion know this phenomenon well. No student at a Harkins table ever raises their hand. They never ask for permission to participate but they are asked to participate while at the same time being asked to bring with them a sense of openness to hearing what others have to say. None of this asks us to sacrifice our own personal values or beliefs, but only to aspire to a higher ideal. So in the weeks ahead, with the help of your teachers, the help of your classmates, Let's set a standard that the saints who came before you, I suspect, work hard to achieve. But perhaps even more importantly, in your case, 
those who will follow in your footsteps might also aspire to. Now, in the weeks ahead, you may have your own thoughts on what I just said. And if you do, I hope you'll find us. Because I'd love to sit down and I'd love to engage. I'd love to listen. Because in doing so, you'll continue my evolution as a human being and help me to grow. But whether it be your town hall meetings, your classrooms, your club meetings, or wherever it may be, let's rise to the very best we can be because we can do that. All right. With that thought in mind, I want to turn to the second topic. And that is the St. Andrews of tomorrow. Some of you will graduate in May. That'll be a great day. It'll also be a sad day. But that doesn't mean you can't be part of the future. Those of you in grades 9, 10, 11, 12, you will absolutely be here and be part of this future. Our future is something I think about every day. You're all going to be alumni someday. I have confidence in that. And therefore, I hope you'll ultimately think about our future too. Because when we think about our future, we actually start with the present, our mission statement. Now, I don't expect that you walk around every day reciting the mission statement in your head. But I think about it every day. Because the mission statement forms the basis of who we are, why we exist, to nurture a diverse community in the Episcopal tradition, fostering spiritual growth, moral excellence, academic and athletic and artistic opportunities, while preparing ourselves for a life of service to our community and the world. That's it. That's who we are. But if a mission statement is who we are, right, then we also, at some point, have to think about where we're going. And so as this school year has unfolded, we have undertaken a process to paint a vision for the future. And today, I formally want to invite you into that process. Because your teachers, your parents, alumni, board members, they're all part of that future, and so are you. So I want to encourage you today, in ways in which I'll show you in a minute, to participate in a process that decides what the St. Andrews of the future will look like. And together, we'll create a mission, a vision statement. What's a vision statement? I want to give you some examples. To provide access to the world's information in one click. Whose vision might you suggest that is? Google. Absolutely. Right? Everything that happens in Google, and every time somebody asks, where's this company going, they turn to that one simple statement. Right? To become the world's most loved, most flown, and most profitable airline. Southwest Airlines. Where's Southwest Airlines going? Why am I doing this work? That's why. One simple statement. Right? Build the best product, cause no unnecessary harm, use business to inspire and implement solutions to the environmental crisis. Well, Patagonia. Patagonia. There we go to a Patagonia store, you have a Patagonia catalog. You can see every bit of that vision statement articulated very clearly. Right? The strongest organizations, whether they did businesses like Google or schools like St. Andrews, possess a very clear vision for the future. And over the next few months, we're going to work as a community to collaborate and create that vision. So up here is a list of the events that are included in this process. I've already spent a lot of time talking to your parents. I didn't talk about you. Spent time talking with alumni. Your teachers spent a fair amount of Tuesday spent while you were enjoying your day off talking about this. And over the next few weeks, I'm going to sit down at three lunches with your student leaders and begin to understand what you want 
out of St. Andrews in the future, where you believe St. Andrews should go. And as those lunches unfold, everybody in this room will also have an opportunity to participate. So I'll send you an online survey. I know you're busy, but believe me, your words matter. And they don't just go into a digital file, but they become part of a much larger process. And at the end of all this, in January, many, many, many more of you are going to be invited on January 26th for a day in which 400 members of this community come together for a St. Andrews Vision Day. And you're going to tell us where St. Andrews is going in the future. So we need your help in this process, and your voice does matter to the people. Whether that be thinking about who we are today, and how we act in the weeks ahead, or 20 years in the future, I very much appreciate your help. And with that, let's have a great day. Thank you.